Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wayne Morsky, and one of my proudest titles is a friend of George Reed. It is one of my highest honors to be asked by the family to be your MC for such an iconic event celebrating the life of a true legend. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of Treaty 4 territory, home of the Cree, the Soto, the Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis. With us today is George's family. To his wife Angie, son Keith, daughters Vicky and Georgette, we all extend our sincere condolences on the passing of your husband and father. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of his life in so many ways. And a special thank you to you, Angie, for the 62 years you have supported and stood beside George in so many ways, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Please know you are a legend in your own kind, Angie. Today we are gathered to celebrate the life of a man who left a mark on this earth that may never be erased. The man was a son, a brother, a husband, a teammate, a father, a co-worker, a philanthropist, a friend, but to all of us he was a legend. When you met him, he seemed larger than life. I know that's the first encounter I had with him. However, that infectious smile and that deep belly laugh soon brought him down to a level that he wanted us all to be at. Simply said, George didn't tell us how to live. He lived and he let us watch him. It is now my pleasure to introduce a group of George's friends that come from many different facets of his life. They are here to share the stories and their experiences about a man they all loved and admired. Our first friend of George's today is the Premier of Saskatchewan, Mr. Scott Moe. everyone. George Reed, he personified everything that is good about Saskatchewan. And that may seem just a little bit odd when you talk about someone who was born in, in Vicksburg, Mississippi. He grew up in Renton, Washington, and likely didn't know a whole lot about Saskatchewan until he moved here in 1963. But Saskatchewan's motto, as we all know, is from many people's strengths. And it means that people come to our province from everywhere, and ultimately they make us stronger. George Reed came to Saskatchewan, and he most certainly made our province stronger. Even more than that, he made our beloved Saskatchewan Rough Riders an awful lot stronger as well. And it's actually hard to imagine if you uh, transpose in this day today a CFL team signing an individual the caliber of George Reed. George Reed in one game in 1961 with his college team in Washington State, he, he rushed for 489 yards and eight touchdowns. The very next year in 1962, he rushed for 503 yards in one game and nine touchdowns. Two games, nearly a thousand yards and, and over a hundred points. <laughs> I'm just a little bit winded actually thinking about uh, running a thousand yards in, in a couple of games, never mind having uh, 11 guys chasing you. Think about the kind of offer that an individual like that would have today from any football team. But that was a different time and that was to our province's great fortune because George Reed came here to play for, for our team and play for our province and he most certainly made each of us stronger. In 1966, his 31-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter sealed the Riders' first ever Grey Cup win. 
And I heard uh, an interview from years gone by here, just this past week I listened to it, about when, when George was asked about what winning the Grey Cup meant. He didn't talk about what it meant to him. He didn't even talk about what it meant to, to his teammates. He talked about what it meant to the province to finally win a Grey Cup after so many years. George had an incredible connection to Saskatchewan and for someone who at that point had only been here for a short few years. And that connection only grew throughout George's time. As the years passed and as the yards and the wins and the, and the records piled up, George Reed most certainly was, was all that was good about Saskatchewan. After all, his, his job was to to, to really run through people from other parts of the country who were trying to get in his way. I, I actually have a certain degree of admiration for that today. But as fiercely competitive as, as George wa was with each of those teams and, and each of those players, he also worked very closely with them. He became their voice as the president of the CFL Players Association from 1972 to 1981, and then again from 1986 to, until 1993, working for the betterment of, of all current and former CFL players, both during as well as after his, his CFL career. So he was not only a Grey Cup champion, he was a champion of, of players' rights. And this week, the Special Olympics Saskatchewan called him a champion of the Special Olympics. The CEO, Faye Matt, had said this, George was an integral part of Special Olympics Saskatchewan, and those that knew him knew this very well. His generosity of time and caring is an everlasting gift. George's respect for all athletes and vision of inclusion were integral in the creation of Special Olympics in Saskatchewan. Everyone in Saskatchewan, whether you knew it or not, is benefiting from the legacy that was created by one George Reed. George Reed made Saskatchewan so much stronger. Over the past few seasons, one of the highlights at every rider game, and we have all seen this, at some point, dur point during that rider game, uh, they would put George quietly watching the game up on the jumbotron. They didn't put his name on the screen. The announcer wouldn't announce who it is because they didn't have to. It was George Reed. And the crowd would see him, and we've all experienced this, and a huge roar would whip through the stadium. And no matter how the game was going at that particular moment, for those few seconds, all was right in Ryder Nation. There's a personal story that I know many can relate to, and Angie and Georgette, and Keith and Vicki, I'm certain you've heard stories just like this many, many times. A few years ago, uh, I got a call from a, a close childhood friend of mine, his father had received an unfortunate medical prognosis. His father was our minor coach in a number of different sports. He was a British immigrant, and he was the most loyal rider fan that we had in the community where I reside, which is an eight-hour round trip to a rider game. He desperately he had attended so many rider games in years gone by, and he desperately wanted to attend a final rider game. But it wasn't easy with all of the medical devices that he had. He, couldn't make his way around the stadium and he wasn't able to easily be seated anywhere in the stadium. And on top of all of that, we were in the midst of a, a pandemic where games weren't being played in many cases. But what on August the 6th of 2021, when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders finally played that first game back after uh, that pandemic break, uh, they, that game was played to a sold out stadium. We were able to arrange to have uh, my friend's father seated on the deck, not far from George and of his beloved Angie. And Georgette, you were there as well. George and Angie, you were so gracious with your time with, with my friend. My friend John, he had attended so many Rough Rider games throughout his time in Canada and in Saskatchewan. But his most precious game was his last one. It was the first game back since the pandemic break to a sold out crowd. It was a perfect last game for my friend John. George Reed was back in his spot with his coffee on the Jumbotron and the Riders won that day. Everything that is good about Saskatchewan was most certainly evident and present in George Reed. Thank you, George.
Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you, Scott. The people who knew George would always say he wasn't uh, full of compliments. But I will tell you that uh, him and I were driving back from an event one time and he saw your poster. And he didn't say too much, but he did say he's doing a good job. Thank you for that. Our next speaker today and friend is our former Premier of the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Brad Wall. Good afternoon, everyone. Sixty years ago, this past June, George Reed famously drove right by Regina on his way to Regina. Completely missed it. He had, in his defense, driven all the way from Seattle in a 1961 Chevy Monza when the four-lane Trans-Canada Highway was not a four-lane Trans-Canada Highway. But he missed it. He missed the turn. And, and what he would offer in his own defense was that, at the time, George, ever honest, at the time, Regina was kind of easy to miss. That's the part of uh, the story of his arrival in Saskatchewan that most of us know quite well, probably because it's fateful or it's humorous. It's ironic. <clears throat> but the part of his arrival story upon which we do not long dwell, maybe because it's too obvious now as we view it from hindsight, with hindsight, it's the part of the story that made all the difference. Because he did miss Regina. But he stopped in Belgoni, and he turned around, and he found his way back to Regina. That's the most important part of the arrival story, that and the fact that notwithstanding his own doubts in those early seasons about whether maybe he, he would go back to the United States, he chose to stay, as he shared in a 2015 interview and in his book. He stayed in Regina. He found his way back to Regina, and he stayed. And because he did, things were never the same again here. Not for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, never the same. Not for the Canadian Football League, never the same. Not for the Queen City, not for the province of Saskatchewan, never the same. In the fall of 2008, about a year after we had had the honor of, of, of being elected to government, a friend of mine and a friend of George's, two of them actually, Reg Howard and Jim Hobson, approached me with an idea. They told me that George was selling cars in Calgary, and at that particular time, if the opportunity was right, maybe he might want to come back to Saskatchewan. Well, to make a long story short, a win-win opportunity was identified and to the great benefit of the Saskatchewan Gaming Corporation and Casinos Regina and Moose Jaw, that change for George happened. And on the 19th of December 2008, there was a press release issued by the Saskatchewan Gaming Corp. You can actually go see it on the government website today, amongst all the other archives, press releases. And in in that particular quarterly period, there were a lot of press releases on, oh, health care and education, you know, government -y stuff, the economy, trade. And then there's one that declared this on that day, on 19 December 2008, George Reed comes back to Saskatchewan. 
When I think about the response to that press release and that announcement, I marvel still. There was a buzz across the province. I cannot tell you how many people came up to me unbidden to talk about George Reed coming back. They didn't want to talk about the state of their local highway or health care or education. They wanted to talk about George Reed. I can't tell you about how many third-party conversations that were reported back to me along the same lines, people excited that George Reed was coming back to Saskatchewan, how the talk radio shows were all abuzz with George Reed coming back to Saskatchewan, how many young people who had not yet been born when George played his last game at Taylor Field were excited about George Reed coming back. And why, why was that? Why is that today? Why has the whole province mourned and celebrated his life this week? <laughs> how, many, how many Georges have been born and raised and lived in the province of Saskatchewan since 1905? How many are still living still? If they're not your relative or your close friend, you're probably among those many of us who, when we hear the proper name George without the last name, think of a guy from Mississippi, born there, but from Saskatchewan. It, was, it is a marvel. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that more than him being the best running back ever to play in the CFL, he was this great man, this generous person. You know, important people have their story told in history books. Legends like George, they have their history books too. But they have something else. They have these generations of kitchen table conversations about them. They have the debates, the trivia debates in a local bar about them for decades. They have remembrances and conversations that we have when the commercials are on during a football game that we're watching together. I believe that happens for people and happened for people like George Reed because of what he did away from the thing that actually made him famous. So, thank goodness that as he had in 1963, George Reed found his way back to Regina, found his way back home, and he stayed here. And once again, things would never be the same, not for those that were helped by the George Reed Foundation, not for Ryder Nation in general, never the same. We were so blessed that he lived among us, that he led among us. And she and family, we offer our hugs and our deepest condolences and our prayers for a peace that passes all understanding as you deal with the loss. And we offer our abiding gratitude that you would share this man with us for all these years. In that same 2015 interview, George Reed reflected on one of the reasons he stayed here. He said, and I quote, I would put it this way, Either I started warming to the people, or they started warming to me. And I'm still here. Mr. Reed, in the beating heart of Ryder Nation, you are still here. You will always be here. Rest in peace. Thank you very much, Brad. I just have to share my one story with, about George that's related to something that you were very much involved in and your government was the building of Mosaic Stadium. Uh, as the time progressed over the last uh, year or so, George, uh, George was sitting out in his little perch there in section 34 and uh, everybody would see him as Scott talked about when they panned him and stuff and the riders a while back, we built a nice little shroud around him out of core plast and decorated it up and it looked really nice. 
And the reason uh, we did that is not only because of the, of the weather, but also there's a lot more people being on the champion's deck. And so I convinced George that the reason we did it was for the weather, and he was okay with that. So the very last game that George went to, when he came walking out there to see it, I was nervous. I think everybody from the, the girls from the office who had all been part of it were walking out there, and he looks at it. It's about three feet high around him. And you've probably heard this as many times as I have, Brad. He said, where the hell's the roof? <laughs> Typical. It's now my pleasure to bring up another friend of George's, the 14th commissioner of the CFL and the CFL alumni, Randy Ambrosi. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by thanking uh, the Reed family for letting a uh, kid from Winnipeg and uh, a kid that grew up a Bomber fan uh, to come here today and speak um, on behalf of the Canadian Football League. And I'd like to say on behalf of the Canadian Football League, our nine teams, our Board of Governors, and the millions of fans of this great game of ours, we offer our sincerest condolences to the Reed family on the passing of a remarkable man. I'd also like to say thanks to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for, in classic Saskatchewan Rough Rider fan, for organizing you know, this amazing event, pulling us all together, bringing us all here together today to celebrate and honor George Reed. And as I've come to expect from the riders, is uh, one of the things that you just know is going to be true, that Craig Reynolds, the Board of Governors, the entire organization rally around important things, and they're so incredibly organized. And four times this week, maybe more than four times, but four times for sure this week, I received memos or emails that were ex explaining exactly how this event would work today. And in each of those four emails and memos, it dictated the dress code, which I quote, wear your best rider green. <clears throat> now I want to tell you a little secret. And that is, uh, I have never gotten over the 1989 Western Final. Uh, I have never gotten over the fact that I had one chance one chance at a shoestring tackle on Eddie Lowe, who had picked up a, uh, a sack fumble. I had one chance for a moment of glory, and I blew it. And I watched Eddie scamper into the end zone. I watched the riders go on to victory. I watched the riders go on to play in the 89 Grey Cup uh, in what has to this day re remembered as one of the great Grey Cup games of all time. And I could say this, and here's the secret, I love Rider Nation. I think I respect everything it stands for. I love this province, I love its people. I am not wearing any Rider Green today, and I do not intend to ever wear Rider Green my entire life. So, as, uh, as I got the call from Craig on, um, on Sunday, uh, telling me that uh, George had passed, and, uh, and over the course of the next several days, as I'm sure every one of the speakers today uh, experienced, you went through a process of trying to imagine how in the world could you, in a few short words, pay you know, honor and, and appropriate respect for, for George and all, that he, and all that he meant to us. How do you do it? And so far, uh, both Scott and Brad have done an exceptional job, but how do you do it? And, and your mind is racked with stress and anxiety over wanting to make sure that you pay the appropriate level of respect, that you convey the right message. And you start with just looking at George's football career, and there are so many things that we can talk about. From a player's point of view, and there's several players in the room today, I can say this, that every one of us knows that it is not real, not real in any way, shape, or form that somebody in the position that George played, frankly, in any position on a football seat team, but in the position George played, could play for 13 seasons and only miss five games. That is not human. It is impossible to imagine someone that racked up all of the, rush, the rushing yards, all the, all the touchdowns, all the scoring, all the 
violence of our game could play for 13 seasons, accomplish everything that George accomplished, and only missed five games. That is not human, and it speaks to the superhuman athlete that George Reed was, but it also speaks to his intestinal fortitude, it speaks to his dedication, it speaks to his commitment. But as I said in a tribute to George earlier this week, uh, what made George so special was not his place in the CFL record books. Those things are there and they will be there forever, but it was, it was about his place in this community that made him so remarkable and so special. He was so kind and tireless to countless fans who wanted to meet him and generous to so many causes that sought him out to have to offer George Reed support to what they were trying to do. George's activities in, the, in relating to this community and his commitment to this community are the stuff of legend. And his heart had to be massive because he was an icon celebrating here, celebrated here, I should say, for five decades after he scored his last touchdown. There are very few in the world of sports, the world of entertainment, the world of business, the general world around us, there will be very few that have the sustainability of the presence and the joy. And we heard Brad talk about the fact that when he got, you know, just a, just a glimpse of him on the, on the jumbotron, at the stadium without any, you know, without any prodding or any encouragement resulted in Rider Nation rising to their feet to celebrate their George Reed. That is truly special and truly remarkable and is a testimony to what George meant to this community and what he gave to this community. Coretta Scott King once said, and I quote, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Well, I would humbly suggest that then follows that the greatness of any man can be measured by the compassion he shows his community. And my friends, by that measure, George Reed was truly one of the greatest of all time. George left an indelible, indelible imprint on the CFL. He's left an indelible imprint on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He left an indelible imprint on the province of Saskatchewan and he left an indelible imprint on all Canadians. We will forever be grateful that we had an opportunity to share the world with George Reed. And to his family, we offer our sincerest condolences and to say we are truly honored to have had a small place in George's life. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Randy. I think it's also appropriate at this time that, that we send a, a big thank you to the Toronto Argonauts. I know George was big about the CFL family, and Randy was supposed to be tonight at their 100th anniversary celebration, which is going to be a very big affair, and the Argos graciously understood that Randy had to be here today. This, again, is a reflection of the, the respect that George had and it also is a reflection of the CFL family that we're so fortunate to be a part of. So thank you to everybody in the Toronto Argonauts organize, organization. Our next friend is a really good friend of George's that spent a lot of time with him, but he's also on the George Reed Foundation as a board member. It's my pleasure to call up Darren Mitchell. After choosing Saskatchewan as my home, my hope was to give back to the province that had given me and my family so much. Those were George's words in 1975. My name is Darren Mitchell and I'm on behalf of the Board of Directors. I'm very, very, very grateful to be here today to talk to you. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the impact that George made in our province, not from football, but from the charitable work he did. George started the foundation with a mission to assist Special Olympic athletes and people with physical disabilities. George was the first ever 
Celebrity Ambassador of Special Olympics, a charity that the Foundation supports today. In appreciation to his efforts, the Sask Olympics, where the Special Olympics displayed a mural of George on the outer wall of their building as a way to say thank you. Over the years, the vision of the Foundation expanded to include children with physical and mental challenges, and it continues today. At the height of his fame, George was involved in 47 charitable organizations across Canada. 47. When I think about the amount of time that George gave to others, I think we also have to say thank you for his family that are here today, because they gave that time to us. To Angie, Georgette, Keith, Vicky, with heartfelt appreciation, thank you. Thank you for sharing George with us. Over his 50 years of charitable work, there have been thousands of individuals that have benefited from Mr. Reed. The most recent major donation from the foundation was also our largest. The George Reed Foundation do donated $400,000 to the University of Regina for the establishment of the Center for Accessible Visual Communications, which enables nonverbal individuals to learn how to communicate. That center also now bears his name. When George's health began to deteriorate, there was conversation about how we can ensure that George's legacy and the legacy of the Reed family would continue even after he could no longer be active in the community. It took over a year, but thanks to the work of Cindy Fuchs and Craig Reynolds, I know you're here, we were able to announce the Saskatchewan Rough Rider Foundation and the George Reed Foundation have joined together to create the George Reed Legacy Fund. Through the Legacy Fund, we've, we have ensured that there will be a continued support for the two causes that meant the most to George, Mother Teresa Middle School and Special Olympics. On behalf of my fellow board members, Merv Phillips, Aaron Thompson, and Georgette Reed, I want to say thank you to the riders for making this happen. Before I close, though, I want to share a story about George, and there's lots. I met George 11 or 12 years ago, and I went to my, <laughs> my first meeting, and I was absolutely terrified. He was a hero in everybody's eyes, and to me, he was just bigger than life. Over time, I relaxed a little bit around George, and he, 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 he let his guard down around me. I realized that George was actually a very quiet and very humble man. When we were having beers, which was often, he was just George. When he was meeting fans or in the public, he was Mr. Reed. And as he said, being Mr. Reed had some perks. In 2020, I asked him to be part of a commercial for Sask Health for the Stick It to COVID campaign. He said yes, but there was a condition. He said, you're going to show for me there. You're going to be by my side the whole time because I don't like doing this. I said, fair. So I drove out to the East End, picked him up, drove in front of the stadium, down the road, pulled up as close as I could to the door we had to go in. It was still a bit of a walk. And I'd arranged for a cart to help get him there. And <laughs> he very quietly looked at me and he said, just drive over the curb. <laughs> I said, George, I'm a rule follower. I can't. He said, just drive over the curb and pull up to the door. I said, George, we can't. It's a sidewalk. It's not for the public. He looked at me, and the family would know this, because when he gets a little pissy, he goes. <laughs> he said, when you have your own statue. <laughs> you can drive wherever you want. <laughs> there will never be another George Reed. Rest in feet. Rest in peace. Thank you, Dan, and great job. I have to, when you mentioned the word chauffeur, Georgette said I had to say this. I took George to an executive club dinner one time, and they were all sitting around the table and uh, introducing their guests. And of course, I said, I don't have to uh, introduce this guest. Everybody knows who he is. 
So they came around to say a few things about yourself, George, looked over at me and he says, you know, you know you made it big in Saskatchewan when you got a white chauffeur. <laughs> and that title stuck for a long time. As far as maybe about two games ago, he called me his white chauffeur. <laughs> in the later years, as George was, had some surgeries, there was a, a consistent person that I would see at the hospitals. CFL alumni, and a very close friend, Mr. Cleveland Van. Great stories about the remarkable George Reed. I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the life of an extraordinary man, George Reed. We gather not just as admirers of a football legend, but as a community touched by the friendship, inspired by his mentorship, and humbled by his example as an alumnus of the Saskatchewan Rush Riders. George was more than a football icon. He was a giant in every sense of the word. His legacy stretches beyond the confines of the football field, leaving a mark on all of us that have had the privilege of knowing him. When we think of George Reed, we think of a name synonymous with greatness. His unmatched skills as a running back, his work ethic, and his relentless determination made him a force to be reckoned with. George didn't just play the game, he embodied it. His commitment to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders made him an icon, and his records continue to stand as a testament to his unmatched excellence. I arrived in 1976, new to the world of the Canadian football uh, game, and George had just retired. Watching film of him in action quickly made me appreciate the greatness of number 34. George was far more than a football player. He was a friend. He was a friend who touched the lives of countless individuals, both on and off the field. He possessed a heart of gold and a spirit that radiated warmth and kindness. George had an extraordinary gift for making everyone he met feel important, valued, and loved. In 1989, after working as a state trooper in Texas, my wife and I can talk, uh, con contemplated, excuse me, returning to Regina. During that moment, I reached out to George. I called him, and the conversation was both enlightening and reassuring. His encouragement and support made our decision to return to Regina much easier. It has been 35 years since that fateful call, and I remain grateful to him for the wisdom he shared. When George returned to Regina in 2009, I had the privilege of rekindling that uh, friendship and enjoyed in countless, uh, countless encounters at various events throughout the city. For the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, George Reed was not just a player, he was a symbol of pride and resilience. His unwavering dedication to the team served as inspiration for great generations of fans. His name will forever be engraved in the annals of Rough Rider history, a testament to his enduring impact on the franchise. George's legacy will continue through the countless lives he touched the records he set, and the memories he created. His influence transcends, transcends time, and his spirit will forever be a source of inspiration for us all. In conclusion, let us remember George not solely as a football great, but as a man of character, compassion, and boundless generosity. As we bid our final farewells, let us carry forward the profound lessons he taught us, the values he personified, 
and the love he shared. George may have departed this, this, worth, uh, this earthly realm, but his legacy will forever shine as a guiding light in our lives. Rest in peace, George. You'll be greatly missed. Thank you, Cleveland. I know you meant a lot to George, and we appreciate all the time you spent with him. George was very active in the CFLPA, and through that time, he represented football players across this country in the same way that he played the game, with passion and dedication. Our next friend is a former vice president of the CL PFL Players Association and a CFL alumni, Mr. Greg Feger. Angie and family, I'm honored to be here with you today to share some memories about volunteering with George on the Canadian Football League Players Association Executive. The current CFLPA executive and management team have posted a wonderful acknowledgement and condolences for George uh, on the CFLPA website, so CFLPA.com, so after, if you have an opportunity to look at it. George was CFLPA president on two occasions. First term was 1972-1991, that's been previously mentioned. Um, it was George's second term as president, 86 to 93, when I was in the first vice president role. A few CFLPA leadership peers from that era have shared their memories with me, some of which have woven into my comments. First, a couple of personal notes. George was our childhood hero. George's legend was emblazoned in our hearts and minds well before we volunteered together on the CFLPA. I loved George's laugh. At meetings, driving in the car to fundraising events, or in the midst of a group of fans, George's laugh broke out. It was distinctive, it was contagious, it always made me smile. I treasure my memory of George's laugh. It's notable that George Reed, a perennial all-star and future Hall of Famer back in the day, made it a priority to invest his time, expertise, and energy in service of the health, safety, and working conditions experienced by every player in the CFL. In preparing my notes for today, it has struck me that the CFL, and I'll look at Randy Ambrosi on this one, the success of professional football in Canada was George's overriding pursuit and passion, even though he did that through the CFLPA. Examples of two significant issues that George stewarded the CFL player's interest through included early in, in his first term, the player strike in 1974, and towards the very end of George's tenure, the second time as president, the CFL moved to expand into the US in 1993. George was the glue that held the association together through many tough issues and times. He was respected by CFL players across the league, and they put their trust in George's leadership. George brought confidence and strength to each of us who volunteered with him. The CFL players today benefit from a standard player's contract and a collective bargaining agreement with dozens of clauses <clears throat> negotiated one by one over the years. George's leadership was instrumental to developing this foundation for a constructive relationship between players and the CFL teams. In the context of negotiations, I remember George sharing a learning with us. On a matter of negotiation, first establish the principle, and then start with a dollar, and build from there over the years. Here we are in 2023, and the basic structure of those early agreements are reflected in the current agreement. The dollar values are much higher, 
maybe not where the current players would like them to be, but listen to George. Start with the principal. This is a small example of the wisdom that George brought to the CFL Players Association. Not only did George have the trust and respect of the players across the CFL, George was held in high regard by the owners and management leaders who represented the league. It was clear that what George did and said had a strong impact on the league representatives. One time, in the middle of a meeting with the league, I recall George abruptly standing up saying, it appears that we're done here. We all followed George out of the room to caucus in a private space. The weight of that action was evident in the look of and the, look of and the behavioral response from the league representatives. George's opinion mattered immensely to them. They clearly respected George. What he said and did was watched very closely. Reflecting on George as leader, we know that he led with passion for the CFL overall and for the mission and purpose of the Canadian Football League Players Association. But George, as a leader, also listened closely to the ideas and perspectives of the people around him. He was able to assimilate, assimilate the various perspectives and move the group to a consensus in the course of action. George men mentored player representatives and executive team members to build their leadership potential. He assembled committed advisors with relevant expertise around the player representatives and the executive. Most of these advisors were alumni. George had an extensive professional and personal network that he could leverage on behalf of the CFLPA when required. George was an inclusive leader who treated all of us with respect. George modeled the determination required to achieve the goal, to, to achieve the goal in the face of uncertainty and or opposition. George was accountable to the players as members and he ensured his team was also. As I look into the room today and see the wonderful showing of every G George Reed fan that's here, I reflect on times I was walking with George on what normally would be, let's say, a 15-minute walk back to our hotel from a Grey Cup festival in a, in a Grey Cup city. One hour, maybe 90 minutes later, we're still with the fans. George was signing the autographs, listening and telling stories, even breaking into his distinctive deli laugh. It was wonderful to experience the outpouring of love, respect, and curiosity that fans expressed to George, and in turn, George expressed to the fans. Angie, Georgette, Keith, Vicky, and family members, we know that the time, energy, focus, and leadership that George provided the CFLPA could not have happened without your love and support. Thank you for sharing George with us. God bless you all. May George rest in peace. Thank you very much, Greg. Our next friend, someone who was instrumental in George coming back here and a lot of the stuff that happened around the stadium, a former alumni, and I'm sure he doesn't need much of an introduction, the past president and CEO of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Mr. Jim Hobson. Thank you all for being here. I know that uh, George would very much appreciate it, and I know that the family and all the friends appreciate it, so thank you. I'm gonna try and be brief. Uh, it's been uh, long, but very, very good so far. Um, I first uh, met George back in 1973. I was a fresh-faced rookie from the Regina Rams product of the North Annex and uh, went to training camp. And of course, George was always very quiet. 
And so he didn't have much to say to me, and uh, I was in awe of that whole locker room. It wasn't just George and Ronnie, but Ed McCorders and Bill Baker and so many more. But after about two weeks in camp, uh, we were doing a passing drill, and uh, I backed up too far, and I stepped on George's foot. And George looked at me and said, Rookie, get off my feet. And that was the first words he had to say to me. Uh, but over the years, we got to spend a lot more time. It was interesting uh, sitting here uh, before the program started, and there's a picture up there of, of me blocking for George, and I'm sort of falling down in front, and George has his hand on his back, on my back, and uh, after we got back to the huddle, he spoke to me again. He'd been speaking to me quite a bit by then, but he said, uh, again, rookie, either block somebody or get out of the way. He always had these words of advice for me. But I had such uh, uh, great, great uh, respect and admiration for George as a player, toughest player I ever played with or against. And I uh, got to know him somewhat during that time. Uh, during the last uh, couple of years, I've been facing my own battles, health battles, and I've often thought of George and, and how tough he was and what he endured and how he didn't complain, and all the things that he went through. And so in many ways, uh, he was a role model. Uh, he was my hero. And then, of course, we had that great opportunity when, when George and Angie and the family came back to Saskatchewan, and I got to spend so much more time with him, uh, whether it was at rider events or, or foundation events. I, be, I went on the board, and we spent a lot of time at different things together. And he came and visited the office a lot and uh, always enjoyed him. And Angie and George often uh, were at events with us or come out to the lake. I did think my career, though, as president was over one day when we brought them out for the July 1st uh, parade. And they were in the back of my truck. And as I was going up Canada Valley Hill, both Angie and George fell over in those lawn chairs we had for them. And I thought, well, this could be the end of a beautiful relationship, but they, they good-naturedly got, got over it and uh, carried on. Um, I, I really cannot say enough about the times uh, that we saw that relationship between George and the fans. Uh, he, he was so gracious. He, would, he had spent all kinds of time with fans until they had their autographs, until they had their pictures. Uh, my wife, Brenda, was, was often the picture taker, and she said after a while, she thought her name was, excuse me, could you take a picture of George and I? And uh, that's just the way it was. He had just attracted people. He was humble. He was kind. He was, he was the best of the best, and uh, our fans uh, appreciated that. So I'm um, going to miss him a lot, going to think of him a lot, and... Uh, I, th I know that it'll never be forgotten by the Ryder fans in, in, uh, in the province. So thank you for being here. Condolences to uh, uh, Angie and the family. And uh, Godspeed. Godspeed, George. Thank you. When George arrived in Regina, the first place he went to, and I think it was all prearranged, was the Saskatchewan Gaming Corporation and someone who was a big part of that and a past board member of the Saskatchewan Rough Rider was past president and CEO Twyla Meredith. Well, if you would have told me 14 years ago that I would be standing on the stage for George Reed's Celebration of Life, I would have asked you, what have you been smoking? But I'm, I'm here, and as our lives intersected, thanks to Premier Wall, and I will be forever thankful. I received a call from a friend of the Premier's, Reg Howard, 
that the Premier wanted to bring George Reed home from Calgary and would there be an opportunity for George to work at SAS Gaming? I think I almost fell out of my chair. Within days, we were off to Calgary to meet with George and Angie to try to convince them to return to Saskatchewan and for him to become the Director of Guest and Community Relations at the casino. George was interested and seemed excited about the possibility, but Angie was a little more cautious and protective of George. Apparently, we weren't the first ones to have approached them to return home, but previous, officers had, uh, previous offers had not panned out. They came to Regina to check everything out, and well, the rest is history. So he came to work for us at SAS Gaming in a role that was perfect for him. Our staff, our casino guests, and Rider Nation were ecstatic. We actually had to move his office closer to the elevator because of all the traffic he generated. You never knew who would show up at the office to see George. Of course, there were the legions of fans who wanted to get things signed, but there were also many other uh, Rider alumni, Special Olympic athletes, media, and of course, his weekly delivery of a case of Coors Light from Molson's. We all appreciated that. And did George work? He hosted hundreds of events over the years, and I'm sure many of you saw him at these events. But what you didn't see was all of his hard work behind the scenes to make sure every event was a success and everyone enjoyed themselves. He was the first to arrive and the last to leave, and at that time he was in his 70s. Angie was also usually by his side, always willing to help. I remember we hosted a curling event in the casino box, and the event had three draws per day. He was there at 7 in the morning, bringing coffee and donuts to the box because the catering didn't start that early just to ensure that all of our invited guests would have some refreshments and be taken care of. He would stay in that box all day until the last guest, guests left after the last draw. Then he'd clean up, reorder supplies, and lock up. Many nights he wouldn't get home until after midnight, but he was back at the box the next morning at 7 to do it all over again for a week. Good thing he liked the sport of curling. I always said I wish I had more employees just like George. But that was just one side of this multifaceted man. Shortly after George started at the casino, my husband Ed and I attended our first fundraising dinner with George and Angie in Moose Jaw. The Moose Jaw Lions Club was trying to raise funds for a seeing eye dog that somebody desperately needed in that community an expensive endeavor because of all the training that is required. As the night went on, this small room of people were so thrilled to have George back in the province and in their presence that they generously bid up everything that George had donated to the auction. By the time the night was over, they not only had all the funds required to purchase one dog, but they had enough to purchase two dogs. I had never seen anything like it. It was truly amazing. That was also the night that my husband Ed became George's unofficial bodyguard because, as we also witnessed for the first time that night, the love from Ryder Nation would keep George signing autographs for hours, despite his aching knees and ankles. Over the years, we would see this demand unfold hundreds of times. Sometimes when he was clearly getting tired, Ed had to step in and explain to the waiting crowd that George unfortunately had to leave. Otherwise, George would have stayed there and, until there was nothing left to sign. He was always gracious and never complained, even though he was in pain. He would make everyone feel special, and I can tell you, he genuinely appreciated all of your love. But it didn't only happen in Saskatchewan. George and Angie were visiting their kids, Keith and Vicky, in Vegas, and they decided to come over to Phoenix to stay with us for a few days. George really wanted to go on a tour of the Phoenix football stadium, so we bought tickets for one of the tours that they offer. He had recently had one of his ankles replaced, so he was using a cane to help him walk. Well, we get to the stadium, and our tour of 10 is called. 
There are the four of us from Saskatchewan, two young guys from Minnesota, and you guessed it, four other people from Saskatchewan. The two young guys from Minnesota are thinking, what are the odds that eight out of 10 people on this tour are from the same place? And where did they say they were from? Did they say something about banjos? And do you think we should bolt? But the Saskatchewan people on the tour were thrilled that George Reed was on the tour with them and that George, being the proud man that he was, couldn't have Rider Nation fans see him with a cane. So he throws the cane to Angie and he grinds it out, walking this huge stadium's one hour tour without a cane, while Angie is twirling the cane the whole time like it's a baton. Later that day, we went to a Phoenix Coyotes hockey game, and as we were making our way to our seats, people kept coming up to George to talk to him and get an autograph. I tell you, it was like traveling with a rock star. As you may have gathered, Ed and I and Angie and George became very good friends over the years. We also became close to their family and them to ours as well. We spent lots of time together at endless functions, fundraisers, and other get-togethers, but the bonus is that we shared lots of great times and lots of laughs. And as others have noted, I'll never forget George's laugh. One of my favorite memories is being able to watch and share in the victory of the Riders 2013 Grey Cup with Ed, George, Angie, Georgette, and Keith. George said, despite him being the star of the first Riders Great Cup victory in 1966, that the 2013 victory on the Riders' home field was the best. Even though he was working that day as the host in the box, of course he was. And what a coincidence that we are also celebrating that victory this weekend as the 2013 Grey Cup team is being honored into the Plaza of Honor. Congratulations. I will close by going back to that story of the Moose Jaw fundraiser for the CNI Dogs many years ago. The format for the evening also included a question and answer session for George. One of the attendees asked George if he had anything to say about Ron Lancaster, who had recently passed away. As George was answering the question, he suddenly stopped mid-sentence, dropped his head, and after a long pause, said, I miss him a lot. George, I can say that we all miss you a lot. Thank you, Twyla. Our second last friend to bring greetings or to bring stories and experiences about his buddy. I call him the, his best beer buddy. He wasn't somebody that was involved in football. He wasn't involved in the foundation. He was just a good friend of George, the owner of Smoke and Oakey's Barbecue. Of course, George loved his beef and he loved his beer. I'd like to welcome Eric Johnson to the stage. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the family for giving me the honor to speak today. When I was first asked, I was honored, but I thought to myself, how am I going to get through it without my emotions taking over? That's the effect that George had on people. He was a loving father, a husband, a friend, and he was loved back dearly not only by his doting fans, but also by those who knew him on a personal level. I first met George many years ago when Smoke and Okies started our relationship with the Alumni Association. Over the years, our friendship grew. Maybe in part, it was a Southern connection, but I think mostly it was because we really enjoy each other's company. And we both really like barbecue and beer. 
George spent a lot of time at our restaurant. He even took our smoking class a number of years ago, and he learned how to trim and prep brisket, pork, ribs, chicken. But the only thing I ever saw him smoke was a cigarette. And we sure didn't teach him that. He enjoyed coming and visiting with us, and we enjoyed hearing his deep laugh whenever he was entertained. When Shirley would help out at the restaurant and show up perhaps a few minutes late, she would tell him that she was trying to her darndest to get fired, but nothing worked. George always had a good laugh at that. It was always heartwarming to hear the fans, both young and old, ask if they could approach George. They were always very respectful of his space, and George would always welcome them, happy to pose for pictures. The fans came from far and wide. There were many happy people that left the restaurant after meeting George. And I would like to think that it had something to do with the food as well. I'm sure everywhere George went, he was approached by people that just wanted to shake his hand. George called me one day a couple of weeks ago, and Angie had fallen and broken her wrist, and he wanted a ride to the grocery store. So I picked him up, I drove him over to Safeway, I went in and got the electric shopping cart, I got George in it, and he said, just leave me here and I'll call you when I'm ready. So an hour went by, two hours went by, two and a half hours. I was getting worried. So I called George. He said, I'll be ready in about 30 minutes. I'm guessing maybe he ran into a few fans that just wanted to visit. I don't know anyone that spends three hours in a grocery store besides George and my wife. George had a favorite booth at our restaurant, and we dedicated that booth especially for him. It was interesting that people would sometimes ask if it was okay to sit in his booth when he wasn't there. His presence was always felt. George was the most humble person I've ever met. Despite all of his physical challenges, he never complained. He was happy just to sit and visit and enjoy a southern meal and wash it down with a beer or two. And he had a sweet tooth as well. He loved Shirley's southern pecan squares and ice cream. George was not only a friend, but he was also a member of our of our Smoking Oak East family. Our staff loved George and always enjoyed seeing him. They enjoyed listening to his entertaining laughter. And that booth and the memorabilia above it will always keep George in our presence. We will miss you, George, but you always be in our hearts and our memories. Rest in peace. Thank you, Eric. Great job. Of course, we leave the best for the last. Representing the family here today is George's youngest daughter, Georgette Reed. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you. Thank you for all being here. Thank you for those on the live stream that are joining in. 
Thank you all for wanting to be a part of my dad's celebration. You all knew him as George. To me and Keith and Vicky, he was just dad. To mom, to my mom, she was the love of his life. We are so honored and grateful that we got a chance to come to Saskatchewan, to be a part of Saskatchewan. Most people don't even know how to spell it in Mississippi, where he comes from. Whenever we would drive down to Texas to visit my grandparents, we would be driving and people would look at the license plate on the car and go, where is that? Is that across the ocean somewhere? And my dad would just smile and say, no, it's up in Canada. It's Saskatchewan and I'm proud to be from there. I want to thank everybody that came out today to be able to speak and share stories and memories of my father. He was a fun guy. He was an interesting guy. He was a proud man. He was a, a strong man who had a lot of resiliency, a lot of pride, and a lot of grit and determination, not only on the football field, but to see things get better, to be better, to do better. And that's something that he instilled in me, to always try my best, no matter what, to never look down on anybody unless you were lending a hand to help them up, to be able to do whatever you could to just show people that there's goodness out there and that there is always an opportunity to help and lend a hand. To the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, thank you for making us a part of your family. Dad was so proud to be a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. He was so proud to be a resident of Saskatchewan. He was so proud to be able to be a part of making dreams come true for our family, for the Rough Riders, and for the province. Thank you so much for honoring him today and, and helping put together this wonderful event, especially in such short notice. I appreciate you sharing your weekend with us to be able to celebrate my dad. The George Reed Foundation was a passion and something that he was so proud of. For 50 years, he strived to try to make things a little bit better. And I am so honored that the Saskatchewan Rough Rider Foundation and the George Reed Foundation found a way to come together to be able to keep the George Reed's Legacy Fund going and to keep his dreams and his hopes and his ability to be able to support and help people alive. That's something that he is so proud of and I'm so glad that he got a chance to see that come to fruition before his passing. To all of our friends, all the people that are here that are so happy to be a, a part of this, this presentation, this, this ceremony, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking your time and your effort to be here. My dad was a neat guy. He really was. He had an interesting sense of humor. And for those of you that knew him, he was very quiet most of the time. But he was very astute. Right when you didn't think he was listening, right when you didn't think that he had anything to say, he would always find something very funny to say, just out of the blue. I remember one time I was with some friends and we had been out and we were um, in the sun and we were, had been moving things and my friend had sandals on. And uh, we're finishing the day and we all pull our shoes off to be able to you know, relax after doing all of our, our work. And my dad calls me over, he goes, Georgette, I said, yeah, Dad, and he says, come over here. And he says, look at her feet. And my friend Darlene had shoes on that were, um, had left marks, white and black marks all over her feet. And he goes, and they call us colored. <laughs> and I just was like, where did that come from, Dad? But he always had a funny story or something to say or something to do that would just make you kind of laugh or shake your head. I remember when I was in high school and graduating high school, I, I didn't have a date for the prom, so I took my dad. And we had so much fun and everything, and towards the end of the evening, he looks at me and he goes, let's go get a milkshake. He loved vanilla milkshakes. And I hope that wherever he is, he's up there, you know, having a vanilla milkshake. And I say this respectfully, everyone says that he should rest in peace. I actually hope that he's up there with Ronnie having a cigarette and just talking about football 
and talking about all the things that we should be doing because I think that's the way that he want to go. So thank you all for being here. And I don't have a glass or anything to salute, but just thank you for remembering not only number 34, not only George, but my dad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Georgette, that was fantastic. And to all the family, we extend our condolences again. We wish you all the best. We look forward to further conversations and further stories today. I also want to thank all of the other friends that spoke today and shared their experiences. You know, I, I could feel that big grin and that, uh, that barrel of laugh looking down on us. And I'm, I'm pretty sure a couple of the comments, and anybody who's been around George, he's got that look down with his hand like this motion. I saw it at the last Ryder game when there was an interception. I'm pretty sure after he heard some of the comments today, it was like one of these things, and he very calmly did this. Well, this is where one would normally say before we bring this celebration to an end. You know, however, I don't think I, uh, I can bring myself to say that because this isn't the end. There's so many more stories about George that will be told forever and ever. These memorabilia pieces in front will be around for us to enjoy for a long time. The other day when we were leaving the Labor Day game after we won an overtime against the Bombers, they use a golf cart to take George back to his car. And so I was following it as we walked along. And the fans, they were clapping, they were bowing, they were throwing thank yous at them. And, and it really was emotional to see it, but you know that was just another example of why I believe this life will be celebrated for a long time. The family wanted me to extend congratulations to the 2013 Grey Cup champions and to Miss Wendy Kelly, who were inducted into the Plaza of Honour last night. They want to thank you for sharing your special weekend. And I know it's George in his incredible humble manner would not be happy that he might be stealing some, someone's thunder. So for that, we appreciate. Before we conclude, the family would like to invite everyone to a social gathering at the very back in the other room there where we can continue the stories and continue the memories and all the experiences that we shared with our friend George. On behalf of the family, thank you to everyone involved in organizing this special event. It started on Tuesday afternoon with a meeting and it came together to see what we see here today. And to all you people following online, thank you for the love. It's kind of fitting that we celebrate this legend on the Thanksgiving weekend. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we are thankful that we were able to experience George in our lives. And I think all of us, all the many gifts that he gave on and off the field. It's been said that no one is gone until the ripples they cause die away. George's ripples are far and wide and will last forever. Today, as we did many times before, George brought people together. So let's go forward and do what George would do. Please turn your attention to the two monitors for a closing video. The confident Saskatchewan team continue their ball control type of game. George Reed, regarded as the outstanding fullback in the Canadian Football League. No wonder he had a 5.3 yard rushing average during the regular season. Reed's 1,409 yards, a major portion of the Saskatchewan total of 2,638 yards on the ground. A score, field position, and time remaining dictate that Saskatchewan stay on the ground. With backs like Buchanan and Reed, the Riders have the man for the job and the supporter.
The Saskatchewan offensive team has the momentum, and Ottawa must try to stop their main threat, George Reed. He crashes through Gaines and Collins, but Conroy prevents a breakaway. The advance is 10 yards. Play at the Ottawa 31. Lancaster sets behind that efficient wing line. Handoff, Reed. No stopping him. Touchdown! 